wanted to know what were kind of the starting ideas for Darkness Everywhere. Yeah, well, um, so Cameron Stuckey, who um, I wrote the record with, um, he plays guitar in the band. He plays in this awesome um, symphonic melodic death band called Crepuscle. And um, my old band, Light the City, took them out on tour a little bit and we got to know each other. And then he filled in for Light the City on our European tour on guitar right before COVID. And so I got to know him better. And then when COVID happened, um, him and I kept hanging out and Light the City wasn't really doing anything. And we, you know, we have such similar tastes and like melodic death metal that we decided to um, just start a band that kind of sounded like Light the City, but a little darker, just more straight to the point. Um, like, you know, 90s Swedish mellow death stuff. You know, like we, we, we all love that stuff. And we didn't really want... Any, um, sorry, turn that alarm off. We didn't really want any like frills or any, you know, like American metal influence at all. We really just wanted to go straight Euro sound. Um, and yeah, we just started getting together like in 2020. I forget when, I think it, it I guess it was late 2020, maybe. Um, and just started hanging out here once a week and writing songs. And then the record came together really quick, like in like, under two months, we wrote the whole thing. You mentioned the sound, so uh, to you, what is kind of the main thing in the so-called Göteborg sound? I just like always, you know, gr- growing up, I was into a lot of like melodic punk music and fast punk music and stuff. And then I really got into hardcore early on, um, you know, East Coast hardcore and um, a lot of the Bridge Nine stuff and stuff like that. I loved heavy music like that but then i when i first heard like at the gates and carcass and early darkest hour and stuff like that um the sound just like that i immediately knew it was my favorite sound because you know the the bands i like didn't have any clean singing so it's still just really you know heavy heavy vocals and um i loved the melodies i love harmonized guitars you know i just love like taking that iron maiden you know those harmonies and and throwing it into like old school death metal sound. I just, I, I love that from the start. So, um, you know, all those early Arch Enemy records and um, Dark Tranquility records and In Flames, especially like one of the biggest influences for this band. Um, yeah, you know, that's, that's all the stuff that made me want to start Light the City in like 2003 were all those same bands um, and all those same like early influences from the late 90s and early 2000s are still like, the same influences that made Cameron and I want to start this band, you know? So even though like the city had done five albums already in the last like 20 years, um, we want to do something a little different with this, like mellow death, but just straight on, like there's only one solo on the record. Like we didn't want the riffs to be too technical or anything. We wanted it really simple and just straight to the point. I mean, the songs are like under three minutes too, you know, most of them are. So yeah, I don't know. And not a lot of melodic death metal bands do that. You know, a lot of mellow death bands have like six minute songs with like, you know, eight different bridges. And I love a lot of that stuff, but we didn't, we wanted to cut to the chase, you know. The EP was uh, made in two months or something like that. So uh, what were kind of the inspirations for this music and lyrics? Uh, maybe you could tell like a backstory of one song. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, the theme of when I say it was made in two months, I mean, like we wrote it in two months and then recording it didn't take long either. I mean, it took, you know, we were probably spent a total of 10 days recording it across a couple of months. Um, But uh, but yeah, you know, the theme, it's like I've spent a lot of records in my past in other bands, like writing like personal, vulnerable like realistic lyrics or not realistic lyrics, but like real life ish lyrics. And um, I didn't want to do any of that with this. Like I tie some of my personal darker feelings into this record, but it's more so like, I'm just describing um, the theme of the record is like the seventh layer of, of hell and Dante's Inferno and all the, um, you know, punishments inflicted on people that pretty much sin and, um, you know, treat their life uh, in a kind of, 
in a, in a myriad of ways, you know, gluttonously, um, self-servingly, you know, uh, violently, especially it's focuses more on like acts of violence in your life, getting punished in death. And it's just like this theme of like, it just went with the music to me. I didn't want to do anything like celestial or like, I didn't want to do anything, you know, C theme, like, like with metal bands, like I like picking a theme for a record and it's like their next record would be about something different, but um it all just seemed like i had enough to write about with those themes but um within those themes i would tie personal you know things in my life into them but not specifically you would never know um maybe if you really really knew me you could you know pick up on a few lyrics and be like is that about this or is that about that but i tie it all into like classic metal kind of battle themes you know like themes of violence like just murder just straight up murder just vengeance just hatred like I just explore all these, they're fun. They're feelings. I all, I, 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 I dip my toes into in real life. Like anyone else you have, you, you live life and have these dark feelings sometimes, but it's fun to use a theme, a record like this, just to go full throttle, just absolutely ridiculous. And I don't get, you know, I don't get like gory. It's not like a cannibal corpse record, but it's, it's pretty vicious. You know what I mean? It's very like cut, you know, by the throat, just tearing, tearing people down and, yeah, it, it, it was fun. It was it was fun. It was therapeutic. But, you know, all the songs are kind of um, about slightly different things. Like there, there's a song with Laura from Light the City called Survival of the Sun, which is just about like the world burning over and everyone like perishing very quickly. And, um, you know, in your life, the time you wasted on like battles of pride and like just your own ego and stuff like that. But it's about just the world being destroyed and none of it matters. You know what I mean? So um, from kind of uh, your point of view, uh, do you think this time will uh, change music industry in some way? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to I'm going to turn off my email. So that's not. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't think it's ever I mean, life's never going to be the same. I don't feel like. But I mean, I think there'll definitely be a time very soon where capacity Um, restrictions get lifted and, you know, mass mandates finally lifted and going to shows feels like back to normal, you know, Um, once the cases are low enough and all that stuff. But, um, you know, I think it's just, yeah, it's going to forever change how people tour. I think people are going to get a lot, are going to be a lot safer out there. You're going to see a lot of musicians wearing masks on off time just to like prevent getting sick. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of things, you know, I hope people are safer. I hope people are like, you know, washing their hands and like, you know, like if they're feeling, uh, you know, under the weather, like not going out, you know, even if COVID's gone and gone, I, I still hope people take precautions. So uh, to an extent, you know, we got to live our lives, but um, I think in those kinds of ways, it's gonna, it's gonna have a lasting effect. And also like what I hope is that people remember that two years and are more appreciative for live music and creative artists and bands. And they, they go out to more shows than they used to because we've all been taught it can be pulled from you and like, you know, overnight. What do you think what uh, kind of the best ways to revitalize culture as you know, things are coming back? Yeah. I mean, I think bands just got to get out there and tour again. You know, I think, you know, there's a lot of bands still afraid and for good reason, you know, everyone's situation is different. Some people have kids or, you know, family that live with them and stuff. But I think the only way to like kickstart this again is to like, you know, once you're comfortable getting out, going playing live again, it's like, that's the, you know, that's always been like the heart of the music scene is like, like live performances. I mean, I, I love records just as much as anyone, but without that physical community element, everyone just feels like you're operating behind a screen. You know what I mean? And so for the culture of, of, of every scene, it's like, you know, People need to get back, go into shows too, you know, like people, if they're comfortable, like go see bands you like, you know, help pack out those shows, help make up for those last two years where bands weren't making any money. Um, just stuff like that, you know, do your part. I know, I'm not going to tell, you know, blanketly, you know, like do this or that because everyone's got their different comfort levels. But for me, I've been trying to, you know, support more, more than I ever have, you know, where I can. So.